and you get a, a piece that looks just like this, <clears throat> but you can't cut in this direction. You have to cut the other way. That's how the grain is. And you don't know that until you start cutting. He's known as the stick maker on the Onondaga Reservation, and Alf Jock says he can feel the different character of each stick. Jock has been making lacrosse sticks by hand for more than 50 years, a craft he learned from his father with tons of errors along the way. We kind of went into it bare naked, you know, not knowing anything. But we learned quickly, and we got a lot better very quickly, very quickly. A couple years of ugly sticks, though. <laughs> He's grown from those early errors to become one of the few remaining stick makers in the world. And what he creates serves an important purpose to the sport, providing players the chance to connect with their sticks. It's part of a tradition intertwined with Native American spiritual beliefs. For Indians, lacrosse is a game given to them by the maker. They use wooden sticks to honor the spirit of the game. And each player finds a deeper connection than with today's more popular metal or fiberglass sticks. It's alive. You know, the spirit of the stick is a tree, and the tree was alive. And so when you take that, the essence of that tree and turn it into a stick, of course the stick is alive. Jock isn't just a stick maker. Like many Indians, he played lacrosse, starting at Lafayette High School. He went on to become a world-class lacrosse player, following in his father's footsteps. Last fall, I was inducted into the Ontario Lacrosse Hall of Fame. Eleven years after my father. And what was it like to get that call and to know that you're going to get inducted? Oh, quite an honor. Um, you look through the book and there's these people that you've only heard of. Legends, lacrosse legends. Indians, whites from Canada in the box lacrosse thing. That you've only heard of them. They are already legends. And they're all in this Hall of Fame together and then I come in and I'm part of it. The Hall of Famer continues to make his sticks by hand. He starts by cutting down hickory logs, splitting them with simple tools. The logs are split with an axe and a club and wedges. You put the axe into the tree, you pound it in with the club. Usually you have two people. One guy swings the club, the other guy does the axes and wedges. After a series of several steps, including drying and shaping the wood, the sticks are ready to be carved and finished. Each stick follows its own set of time. And Jock says there's not one method to making a stick. There's no gravy. There's no just cutting. Every cut, every motion has purpose to the end product. He does it all by hand, running the handle through a bandsaw, drilling holes in the head, and hand carving the stick. Making the sticks helps Jock connect to the elder stick makers of the past. I'm looking at these old books. And there's a picture of Tadadaho, the Six Nation chief, the head of all the Six Nation. He's sitting there in a chair, and he's got two unfinished wooden sticks that he's been working on, 1905. And it's like, I have a direct line connection with these stick makers from 100 years ago. A man continuing a tradition for a new generation of Native American lacrosse players. Reporting from the Onondaga Reservation in Nedro, A.J. Mandariccio, NCC News.